Do you have docs up? I do. Okay, awesome. All right. Hey guys, welcome to the Boom Tequila Podcast with your hosts. I'm Erin. And I'm Jody. If you've been in multiple relationships throughout your life, you have probably been with someone you might consider clingy and needs constant validation or someone who seems really unattached and doesn't have much interest in commitment. According to the attachment theory, this is because we all have different attachment styles. So in today's episode, we are going to go over the four different attachment styles, how they are likely formed during childhood, and what ours are. So you want to start us off? That was very boomer of me. I had my mute on. So a person's attachment style is their specific way of reacting to others that they're in a relationship with. Multiple psychologists and psychiatrists have theorized that your attachment style was shaped and developed during your early childhood response in relationship with your earliest caregivers. So basically, our adult attachment style is thought to mirror the dynamics we had with our caregivers as infants and children. Oh, that almost sounds Freudian. (laughs) Right? (laughs) So the four attachment styles are secure, anxious, avoidant, and fear avoidant. About 56 of adults have a secure attachment style. This style refers to the ability to form secure, loving relationships with others. They can easily trust others and be trusted, love and accept love and easily get close to others. They're not afraid of intimacy and have no negative feelings when their partners need time or space away from them. And they can easily depend on others without being completely dependent. Next is anxious attachment style, which is a form of insecure attachment marked by a deep fear of abandonment. Anxiously attached people tend to be very insecure about their relationships, often worrying that their partner will leave them and constantly need validation. Anxious attachment is associated with neediness or clingy behavior, such as getting very anxious when your partner doesn't text back fast enough or constantly feeling like your partner doesn't care enough about you. About 19% of adults have an anxious attachment style. I feel like more than 19%, but whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Avoidant attachment style is a form of insecure attachment style marked by a fear of intimacy. People with avoidant attachment style tend to have trouble getting close or trusting others in relationships. And relationships can often make them feel suffocated. They typically maintain some distance from their partners or are largely emotionally unavailable in their relationships preferring to be independent and rely on themselves. Approximately 25% of adults are avoidant attachment type. Fearful avoidant attachment is a combination of both the anxious and avoidant attachment styles. People with fearful avoidant attachment both desperately crave affection while wanting to avoid it at all costs. They are reluctant to develop close romantic relationships, yet at the same time, They have a dire need to be loved by others. Fearful avoidant attachment is also known as disorganized attachment, and it's relatively rare and not as well researched. But we do know it's typical to experience heightened sexual behavior and an increased risk for violence in their relationships and difficulty regulating emotions in general. Awesome. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Have you ever thought to yourself that you seem to always end up with the same type of person or the same things keep happening in your love life? Or why do you keep ending in the same situation with different partners? You might feel like you're always more involved than your partner, or you feel like you really want to be with someone, but as soon as things get emotionally intimate, you back off. You might really benefit from digging deep and exploring the way you attach to people. I took the test and I got secure. And in general, I agree with it, but it's definitely not all black and white. I can see parts of myself in mostly all of these, depending on the situation or the relationship. I do want to add though, the one that there's a, there's a few different type of these tests that you can take. And I think the one that I took was more based on like my childhood 
And because it didn't really ask about like relationships now. So like I had a great childhood. My parents were really involved with everything. So of course I'm going to get secure. But if I had to be honest, I would say overall I'm secure, but I also think I have a lot of the avoidant tendencies and like I, I tend to like detach myself. You know what I mean? But yeah. did you take the test? For sure. I did. And it's interesting that you said the different results for ones based on childhood and not because I did. And I actually took a couple of different ones. Um, and so the one that I took that was about where I'm at now said that I was primarily secure, but it like gauged them. And with like a sum of the fearful avoidant or the disorganized type with like more in the like fearful than the avoidant. And I feel like that is fairly accurate. What's interesting is when I took the one that was just based on childhood questions and not so much like how you are now, I think that it said more the fearful avoidant or disorganized in general, which is, it was interesting as I was, that's why I was, I was reading that. I was like, oh, great. Like <laughs> what a, what a killer lead in. Um, but some of the things that it said, I'm finding it again, um, you know, like more likely to, I guess, like have violence in relationships and things like that. And certainly some of my earlier relationships and, one thing I will say, I guess, if anyone else is in this category of like the disorganized or fearful avoidant, um, that I, after, you know, some not so great relationships, I went to therapy and took like a very long time off of dating in general. And I think that that helped. And we're now, I'm at a very different place and I do have a much more secure, but there's still like some of those tendencies to be like a little bit cautious or anxious or like, you know what I mean about things like they still slip in. It's just now I'm coming from a healthier and more secure place and I'm more self-aware. So when they're slipping in, I can at least catch them and be like, okay, let's talk about this or whatever, because I don't know. Does that Absolutely. make sense? Yeah, definitely. And we talk later on in this episode about if you are more towards the insecure attachment styles, ways to get to the secure one and to change that and do better. And I think that you've done that without even listening to the episode. You already know what to do. So look at you go. Oh, well, we can stop with that. I'm so sorry for jumping ahead. <laughs> no, but, I, and I think a lot of these are like the more, um, like exaggerated, like where they're talking about the abuse, like if your parents were abused, I don't necessarily think that that's all cases. And we do talk about later about how you can be secure, but then uh, your adult relationships can kind of change that too. But anyways, uh, we're going to talk a little bit now about where our attachment styles begin. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yes. I'm so sorry because I scrolled up for that other thing. We're at many researchers. Okay. Yes. yes thank you. <laughs> many. All right, guys. Many researchers believe that our attachment styles are developed between 7 and 11 months of age. They are determined by how the caregiver reacts to the child when they are in emotional distress. The quality of the bond, whether it's loving and stable or inconsistent and even absent, can influence us throughout life in how we deal with loss and how we behave in relationships. Here are a few circumstances that can lead to each different attachment style. I thought that was so crazy. I would never think that that young, less than a year old, but I will say I was watching, not to like really go off topic, but I was watching this documentary, not the other day actually. And it was talking about when babies are born, they're actually like the smartest they'll ever be because they've done like these scans on their brains and their brain activity is like so much more than an adult or even like a young child because they're, I mean, I'm sure they're like just taking so yeah. much in, but I mean. That's so crazy. Well, I know yeah. just from like doing like foster care stuff for a while and learning a lot about like different attachment things or working with kids that had like reactive attachment disorder or also called RAD, that a lot of those are developed really, really early in life based on unhealthy attachments or lack of attachment as an infant. In fact, I, I'm guessing this isn't in here, so I'll throw it in. But I always remember this one study that was done. I want to say it was done in Russia in like the 70s. And it was before um, 
ethics, I guess, were like a thing in uh, scientific research, they had this orphanage and they wanted to test human touch to see if it was kind of like a, a need or, or whatever. Anyways, they had a certain amount of babies that got held every day and, and fed whatever in the orphanage. And then they had another set that were not touched at all. They were fed through, you know, like they got no human touch. And if I recall the results of the study correctly, 100% of the babies who did not receive touch, even though they still received the same food and water and everything else, died. Mm -hmm. And like- I remember hearing about that. It's crazy. Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah. When I was doing this research, it really made me think about like kids in foster care and that and how even if you're a foster parent and you do everything you can, like the taking the child away, even like as a baby can be so traumatic. So, I mean, I'm sure obviously that's not as traumatic as whatever they've gone through to be taken away. Anyways, for secure attachment, the caregivers are responsive and attuned to their child's needs. For anxious attachment, caregivers are inconsistent and unpredictable with affections. The unpredictable fluctuation between being emotionally available and distant leads children to be anxious with future relationships. With avoidant attachment, caregivers are not responsive and they're often dismissive and distant. They're consistently emotionally disconnected from their child, resulting in the child believing that their needs won't get met. And with fearful avoidant attachment, children live in the type of attached environment that involves a caregiver who is frightening or traumatizing, <laughs> leading to the child, leading the child to experience a deep sense of fear and a lack of trust in others, despite wanting close connections. They may be neglectful or even abusive. This creates a child who develops a poor understanding of boundaries and is confused about what a healthy relationship should look like. Parents and caregivers are not always the ones to shape your attachment style. It can be influenced by significant relationships that you have throughout your whole life. Obviously, betrayal and infidelity in adulthood can lead to an insecure attachment. While we may all have a primary attachment style, depending on our relationships, we may feel more secure with one person than we do with another. And for a lot of people, their attachment style is not the same with every relationship they encounter. Do you think a person can change their attachment style? I absolutely do because I, I mean, I think that I have changed mine, um, at least significantly. I'm sure there's always growth to happen for sure, but, um, absolutely. I think you can always heal and you can always grow and do a better if you want to. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. You can <laughs> always change from an insecure to a secure attachment. And we're going to tell you how. All right, guys, first, you need to identify your relationship patterns. Start by thinking about your relationship with your parents as a child and ask yourself questions like, how were they towards you as a child? How did you respond to them? Who did you go for? Who did you go to for comfort when you had a problem? Were they negligent or reliable? This will help you to get more clarity on what may have shaped your attachment style. Assess your current and past attachment style and identify if there are any patterns in choosing romantic partners. Be aware of your childhood history, whether it was good or bad, meaning your past unhealthy relationship patterns from childhood can be recreated in adulthood. And learn to value, love, and care for yourself more. Uh, if you can't fathom what self-love is because you were neglected, abused, or dismissed as a child, you can start with self-tolerance or self-neutrality, or um, I'm going to insert those therapy. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I saved it for you too. I just really want everyone to go to therapy. Okay. <laughs> yes. But this can look like I'm a person and everyone deserves to be valued instead of forcing yourself with empty words. Like I'm beautiful and valuable. Learn to be assertive and set boundaries and express your needs thoroughly. And last, you did. You can always <laughs> seek therapy. A quality therapist will help you dive into your attachment style, past wounds, ways to identify, establish appropriate boundaries, and promote a healthy relationship. And we, one of our first episodes was on boundaries. 
And when I tell you that this was probably one of the singular, like most important lessons that I wish I had learned much earlier in life, but didn't really get until I was an adult. Um, boundaries, guys. I mean, like seriously, starting there changes everything. <laughs> I'm even like teaching my son things. Like if someone is a family member, or someone's like joking with him or a friend's joking with him, I'm teaching him if he's done, like he'll just laugh and say no. And I'm saying, tell them, please respect my boundaries. I'm done playing. I'm done, you know, and I'm, you know, it's, it's important things, you know, it is. Yes. Boundaries. <laughs> yes. So do you feel like, um, do you feel like now that when you think about like your childhood to thinking about like some of the like more distant types or whatever, or avoidance, sorry. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's rooted in childhood stuff at all too? Or do you feel like it's more? I don't really think so with my childhood stuff, but I definitely think that has formed from past relationships. I was going to make dish fish all about like rating our past relationships and saying if they think like, if we think this one was, you know, avoidant or this one was secure or whatever, but I thought, mm, so fun. <laughs> I thought we better not, but <laughs> because honestly, I think that all of mine have, they've, I've had a little bit of all of them. I can only think of one that I've had in the past that I would definitely consider secure relationship. Um, but I think that those have made me definitely more avoidant. And I think a lot of that, and I know I preach this like every episode, but I think a lot of that stems from controlling relationships. And that makes me want to like detach, you know, mm -hmm. but, which extreme control is a form of, you know, I mean, it's, it's not quite the same as like. I don't know, some of the other abuse types, but it is a form on that like wheel. There's like, it might even be called the wheel of control that is, uh, anyways. Yes. Anyway. I got you. <laughs> I got you. So, um, what do you think that, oh, never mind. I think I talk about that in Dish Bish. So, but yeah, that's all of our information wise for attachment styles. So now it's time for Joe Jam. What do you have this week? guys i have this is a new song out by cardi b featuring i think kanye west and is it lil dirk i don't know um it's called hot shit also side note lil dirk is a really stupid name <laughs> not like dirk i don't know there's something about saying dirk that just feels oh, dirky <laughs> uh... Yeah. Anyways, that was unnecessary. What about you? <laughs> um, I have, I've come across a new song by Luke Combs and Miranda Lambert. And the song is called Outrunning Your Memory. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a hit. It's really I, good. I think so. You're always right. So I'm sure it will be. Oh, I just remembered this on the one that I did on the new, that Cardi B song that yeah. Kanye West is on. I've heard rumors that Nicki Minaj like cut the monster song that she did with Kanye from like some performance and was basically like really mad because Kanye did a feature on a Cardi song when there was like Nikki and Cardi beef over honestly who knows what but oh in, my. in case you wanted that wait I thought she retired I thought she wasn't rapping anymore um, I mean she had a kid but I don't think she really retired she's wait. she has like a radio show and like Nicki I'm Minaj right yeah that's who yeah. I'm thinking yeah. No, she didn't retire. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, some good songs. So check them out. Here. Here. <laughs> and now it's time to dish fish. Time to dish fish. Yeah. So for this week for dish fish, I just have some random questions, a few that are going along with our attachment style questions, and a few that are just random. So are you ready? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, I think the first few are kind of going along with this episode. So uh, number one, have you ever dated someone that you would consider had secure attachment style? Because I feel like, especially with men, this is super rare. 
It is. Um, <laughs> maybe I don't know um definitely most of my past relationships I would say no but um I don't know I haven't done the I haven't done the the quiz on yeah but like no one like off the top of your mind you think like yes they they were secure not in the past no 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 in the future <laughs> All right. What style would you say is most common that you've dated in the past? Oh, um, I don't know. Um, probably the, the disorganized, the fearful avoidant. Yeah. Or yeah. I would say mine are big on like the anxious. My, my past ones are big on the anxious. Yeah. Oh, super I, fun. I see, that. I see that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Super fun. All right. What was the last dream that you had that you can remember about? Ew, no, because it's actually really gross. That You have to tell it now. You can't tease the world. No, it's like kind of like a downer gross. <laughs> <laughs> like it's fucked up. No. <laughs> you got to share. You got it. When was it? Was it last night? Yeah. Um, you were in it too, <gasps> but it was like, I don't know where, I don't know where this came from. Okay. So this is what, now I'm trying to remember it. Cause I remember like waking up and like, what in the actual fuck? <laughs> <laughs> why does, why? Have you been having like really vivid ones lately? Cause I swear I have. This one was, and it was really like, when I tell you, you're going to be like, yeah, what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> why did your brain think of that? And I don't have a good answer. I don't, <laughs> okay, whatever. For it. Yeah. All right, so it was like the 1700s or something. I don't know. I don't really know time periods that good, but it was like pilgrim dress times. I love and it. <laughs> you and I were like there, like we were friends in this like olden days time period and something was happening and we had to like run away and like fake our deaths. <laughs> And you had like already faked your death and you, we were supposed to meet at some spot, but then I had to like fake my death too. So like I ran away and I remember I was like laying like face down in some field and they were like, <laughs> okay, she's, it was like nighttime and they were like, okay, yeah, she's dead. So, but I was waiting to like run until there was no one around and they had some guy that came out this is so gross <laughs> it came out I told you it's, it's gonna turn downhill very quickly okay that came out to like clean up the there was like blood or, I don't even know why there was blood because I had faked my death like this made no sense <laughs> you come out to like clean up the street the street near it or something and then while he was like cleaning up the street he's like oh I remembered there was like a girl that died over there and then he like comes over and he was gonna like Sexually assaulted. Oh my God. <laughs> so it took a really downhill turn. Wow. Did he I do know. it? I, I woke up. I woke up. Oh my God. Fuck. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, what about you? Oh, wow. I swear. I've been having vivid ones like every night. I swear. I wake up and I like really remember them. Um, the last one I had was last night. It was either the last night or the night before I was going to jail and I never figured out why, but I was going to jail and I was trying to figure out how to get you over here so that you could take my phone so that you could like still post on social media for me and answer my text messages and calls. <laughs> That's what's important. And like, yes. And I was like, I need you to come to the state and take my phone. And you were like, Joni, it's fine. Like you're just go to jail and you'll come out really fast. And I'm like, no. And I was really mad at you. I'm like, you need to come here. <laughs> so then like, I was trying to sneak my phone into jail and they kept saying, if you sneak your phone in, then there was like a group of us. And they were saying, if you sneak your phone in that you'll have to stay for an extra 30 days. And I was only going to have to stay like one night or like one or two nights. And I was just like, I think I'm going to try and sneak it in anyway. Like it was so worth it. Yes. It was so stupid. <laughs> and I remember getting in there 
and like realizing that they were going to find out that I had my phone. And I was like, who looks the nicest? And I found this old man and I was like, I want to ask him if I can take my phone out to my car, but I was already like in the jail in like my outfit, like your jail, which was, was kind of cute actually, to be honest, it was like this <laughs> romper thing. I don't know. And, <laughs> and I was like, I need to ask this man if I can take my phone out, but I feel like they're already going to add the days on. Cause they said, if you go past this point anyways, um, I don't, I think I took my phone in and ended up getting in a lot of trouble, but they were like, well, since you're going to stay an extra 30 days, you can just keep your phone. And I was excited about it. And I was like, well, that's cool. I can just take pictures from jail for Instagram. Oh my God, I have a problem. <laughs> that's amazing. But then did you have to fake your death? <laughs> not yet. That's tonight. That's in tonight. I hope not. I hope not. Wow. Um, oh my gosh. my gosh. Anyways. Yeah. So great. Love that. Next question. Super weird. If you suddenly grew a tail, would you hide it or leave it out? That kind of question. <laughs> um, I would hide it and I would look into like plastic surgeons or like orthopedists that would be able to take care of it. I try and figure out like how they do it with when they cut dogs off. Like, don't they put a rubber band around it like really tight and it just falls off? I would probably look into doing something like that. I think, I think that's how they cut it off. So you'd just have a little stump. You'd probably have a stump. <laughs> I'd hide, I'd hide the stump for sure. <laughs> it would just always look like you had a little like butt boner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. Like never going swimming again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is a useless fact that you know? A useless fact. Do you want to know mine? I don't know why yeah. I'm so excited about this, that, but okay. So two of the most commonly talked about dinosaurs are the T-Rex and the Stegosaurus. But did you know that the Stegosaurus had already been extinct for 80 million years before the Tyrannosaurus Rex was even alive? The yeah. time separating them is greater than the time separating the T-Rex from humans. Uh, that's Super wild. cool, huh? Yeah. So you believe in dinosaurs? Yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> wait, wait, tell everyone about your dinosaur, the dinosaur love. The dinosaur love. The dinosaur Christian love thing that you found. <laughs> Christian love. No, no, no. I found this group on Facebook called Dinosaurs Against Christians Against Dinosaurs. And probably some people already know about it. I made a TikTok about it and like, there was a lot of people who were really excited about it. And then there were it. some people that were like, welcome to, there was one person that was like, welcome to 2014. Like a lot of people that were already <laughs> knew it and apparently were like already really it. into it. And because, okay. So anyways, in, in the, this group, sorry, I jumped ahead. I skipped like the whole story in this group. I, the first thing I saw after I joined was this post about, and it was like, no wonder God does, doesn't approve of the dinosaurs. <laughs> and it was just like pictures of all of these books that are written of it's like this whole category of books that I didn't know existed until recently of dinosaur erotica and there do you want me to read you some of the titles yes yes please good. do it they're good oh hold up I'm thrilled for this we got yeah um Taken by aliens and offered to the T-Rex. And that's like the, the picture for anyone watching the YouTube. I'm showing the covers of these because they are, they are worth it. Oh, uh, Space Raptor Butt Invasion, which has this nice like raptor like, dino on the moon. Um, very sexy. Um <laughs> This one, honestly, is my personal favorite because if you're going to date a dino, it might as well be a sugar daddy dino. Um, my billionaire triceratops craves gay ass. And I also, I really like his top hat. I just feel like it's a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> and oh got ravaged by raptors. Wait, can you please read one of these and do an entire episode about the book? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I can. Yes. Um, I'll I'll do it. You do one and I'll do one and we can do half the episode so we don't have to like go crazy. And we can just like tell about it. Yeah, we can we do, do like, half or we of can, your book. we could do like teasers to because, yeah. you know. I'll, I'll take one for the, the team. Details. I'll read. I'll read it. <laughs> They're on Amazon. Uh, some of them are on Audible. Those will be the ones I... I do. I want to. I want to hear it. <laughs> oh my god! The T Rex like <laughs> roaring. <laughs> so, oh my god! So that can be your useless fact that you know about dinosaur erotica. Yeah, there you okay, go. Great, awesome dinosaur. Yeah, position <laughs> me as like the dinosaur erotica expert. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my god! Okay, and our last question: What? is something that you will never say no to never say no to you'll never say no to besides butt stuff um like adventures like any if if you ask me and this is probably honestly this is probably your answer too because I think you would say this but like if you are like if if I'm available and like you want to go on a trip or like something like that or some kind of like I'm down I love that to do the things. Yes. As long absolutely. as you don't involve dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way I will. No. Okay. <laughs> no, same. Definitely same. I'm always down for an adventure. I always, I always want them all the time, all day, every day. But yeah, so that's all we've got for today's episode. Is there anything that you want to add about attachment styles or dinosaurs or? <laughs> I don't, I don't think so I think don't get too attached to dinosaurs <laughs> um but yeah yeah that's it all right well, thank think... you guys thanks so much for joining us on this wild ride that we've been on today if you haven't follow us on Instagram on TikTok join our Facebook group um email us yeah you can email, email us, us too probably, yeah we might not see it, we might not see it. <laughs> <laughs> um definitely subscribe to our youtube channel we like that and give us all the thumbs ups and give us good sexual comments we like that not too sexual because youtube doesn't like that they delete it so yeah <laughs> i don't know right okay i know some of y'all some of y'all nasty yeah we see them but they get removed yeah so we we'd leave them but it's not up to us so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks. See you next week. Bye. Bye.